Uh, a very good day, everybody. So some of you know that uh, if you'd watched the last couple of videos, <laughs> I'm not having a go at you, right? Because I've put out quite a lot of content. Is that we're expanding the antenna field because I'm developing a directional antenna for uh, DX Commander. I've got to come up with a master idea, okay? So just allow me to run through, and it's got to be, oh, well, I've got some requirements for this, which is it's got to be permanent to semi-permanent, not fully permanent. I don't want to dig a yard of concrete into the middle of the farmer's field, okay? So because we could go down, you know, lattice tower, and you've, you've, you've seen a lattice tower, I'm sure, on the internet. It's got three, um, and you put a rotator and a rotator support in the top, and you can put your and antenna. But this requires a ton of, of concrete down here. And that would be self-supporting. I'm not going to go down the self-supporting route. And I've looked on eBay uh, at all sorts of ideas. And basically, where I'm coming from is I'm after about 40 foot. So now 40 foot just so happens to be two scaffolding poles that are, in my world, six metres long. In, in bananas, it's 20 something feet. Two scaffolding poles, and you can put a coupler here. Not for the lateral strength, so much, but just to keep them together, you know. And I'll need four guys. And the reason I need four guys is because some people call this a gin pole, but it's incorrect. It's actually a falling derrick. So you connect, this is all guide up. This is the falling derrick, which is all connected. And when you lift the falling derrick up, the mast comes down. And then when you want to erect the mast, you pull on the falling derrick and the mast comes back up. But if you think about it, that's quite a lot of guy wires because this one needs to be guyed this way. This one needs to be guyed from there to there. And I want a way of removing it once it's up and it just looks very pretty. And then when I want it down again, I'll attach the falling derrick, connect the wires, undo the, the guy from here, clip it onto the falling derrick and do it. And move it over. I've done that before and I did that with three scaffolding poles it's a bit precarious, to be honest. But I'm just going to do it with the two, because two's just enough. Now, I've got a lot of an other antennas in the field. So I want to detune this. And if it was aluminium, for instance, it was bound to be connected to the earth. And at 12 metres, it will look like a reflector a little bit on the 40 metre band, which I'm worried about. Now, what I have found is a company that does... Uh, massive scaffolding tubes, huge uh, wall thickness in fiberglass. So I'm thinking of doing this in fiberglass. So there's a couple of things I'm going to need. And reason for this video is I don't want to get this completely wrong. Now, if you've got a better idea, then I want you to tell me. Because one of the ideas I did come up with is you can erect another pole here in say steel permanently all right but again we're going to need this a fairly good concrete block under here which i don't mind if it's not too big and what you can do is you can guide this one down there and then put a winch so that when your mast is tilted over you can have it doing this. The trouble is, I'm too long for that, and this connection here won't be, in my opinion, strong enough. I mean, you've got the whole contraption at the top, which is gonna be a cubicle quad, all right? So I prefer the falling derrick system because we can have guys coming up to 10 meters and six meters and possibly three meters to hold the whole thing in place for guys. I'll show you the hard way I'm thinking of doing and because it's got to be economical okay it's got to be the sort of project where anybody could do it all right one last thing before I show you the bits and pieces is that if you do a falling derrick system 
then the, exactly where the hinge point is and the guy wires need to be, you know, cock on. So I'll need a laser leveler because I'll do what I did with the 12.4 out in the field. We'll put concrete, small concrete, you know, a bag of concrete <laughs> deep in the ground with a scaffold pole and I'll raise the guys up at about two feet, 60 centimetres. So dogs go underneath it. And that will be the hinge point because when everything folds over, I'm going to use a non-stretch rope. Well, Marstrand 6 mil, for instance, quarter inch, the P series, I think it's got a stretch of up to 3%. So I'll use either Marlow, like a Dyneema type thing, or maybe Marstrand. So everything's got to be cock on because all the guys, apart from the one at the back, when you drop it down, obviously they'll go loose. But you want everything else to be under tension. So nothing moves as it comes up. I have experience of this with my 60 footer that I built. And as a test, we did four scaffolding poles in aluminium. The first two should have been steel in hindsight because the downward pressure, it twisted the whole thing came down. It was a bit of a nightmare. So let's show you what I got and see if you've got a similar. So in our country, we've got this company called Barenko and they do all sorts of really, really top quality stuff. I think it's the galvanizing. It's very, very thick. And it's very well winded. Now, Brian, I used to know, but I've heard a rumor that Brian went silent key, uh, but the business is still running. Brian, if you are not dead, let me know. Tragic, because uh, he wasn't much older than me. And he's been waving, he's grown a fantastic company as Brian. But anyway, he does a range of tilt over odds and ends. So the chances are, I'm probably gonna use the double socket, which I've used before out in the field. And I won't just use a friction. I won't just bolt it in to friction. I will actually drill holes. I'll pad the back of the fiberglass out so I can cross bolt right and stop this thing. So I don't want it rotating. I don't mind if it's a bit of wobble, if you know what I mean, because it's all going to be guide. I wonder in the US, do you have a, or, an, or in Australia and the South Pacific and Australasia, you've got a supplier that does stuff like this. It's absolutely great stuff. So that's the double stop hinge. He does a very, very high quality two inch. Well, it's actually for scaffold poles. Guide heavy duty mask coupler. So that's the one. I think I'm going to have for here. And then he also does a nice guy clamp. This is a perfect size to put at the top, which will be, you know, up here somewhere. You gotta remember I'm putting a quad in. All right. And a quad, I've got to be able to rotate this quad. So now I've done the maths. So this, my guy point, if this is 12 meters high, my guy point can be 10 and a half meters in height and six meters out i'm comfortable with six meters out well i'm comfortable with six meters out i've done i haven't done the maths but because i've built these before i'm happy with with six meters particularly if the guy points which will be steel concrete blocks i've got to be able to dig them out that's all um they'll be very very strong what else does he do Oh yeah, and for the top, I've bought these before. I have a Create RC5-1 rotator. So uh, he does this side mount business. So you've got your you've got your your pole here, and then he's got these two basic two little platforms. All right, one you put your rotator on here. And then you've got this the big Yesu or Create, there's a few companies do it, top bearing. And so, and so it's a side mount. And then you've got this, and I'll put a little aluminium post here, probably about three meters long, so I can attach the quad to the side mount. So all my weight's gonna be at the top, right? But I don't have a problem as long as I've got the right rope. So and if you know the right rope, apart from me, I, I will contact Marstrand. I'm going to ask Marstrand to support this because it's expensive rope. And because I'm going to be making some projects, 
uh, be free PR for them, you know, because they do all the connectors and everything, Master Ant do. So, but I've worked out just the rope and the connectors is about £350. The poles are only about £50, £60 each plus delivery and two, three hundred pounds worth of connectors from Barenko. And we should have a system we got them down. By the way, when this goes down, because I'm going to have, I don't know, a roughly, I had a guess, say 20 kilos at the top, uh, plus the fiberglass poles, it might be a little bit heavy for me. I don't really want to do it on a single rope. So I'll probably put a double pulley um, at both ends sort of four to one so i haven't got all the tension on my hands i've done that before i've had to grip a rope instantly and it and it went through my rope my hands about two inches before i managed to stop it of course you end up with a terrible burn so there we are even if there was in the uk we had a company called uh, versa tower and there are lots and lots of versa towers out there second hand but again, I've just got to, you know, it needs big concrete at the bottom. You still need to guy it. It's a windy uppy, windy downy thing. A lot of hassle. 40 foot, I can do that. And I can even put a little extension on the top if I wanted to put something bit bit odd, if you know what I mean. It's going to be quite a jaunt from here to there. So I'm going to contact Stefano at Messi and Poloni and I might put a new run of uh cabling uh, for this at their highest quality see if stefano wants to support me on that as well uh, very good so anyway after this we've got the dx commander force uh, dx command dx engineering four square to put in we've got john gendron's triangular array i've been mucking around on visio uh possible field overview hopefully you can see that uh there's the four square. There's the 80 meter triangular array. Here's the tower kind of floor, whoops, floor plan. Uh, I'll put a little DX commander vertical in the corner out the way, you see. And I was just reserving this bit here. This area here was where I've got the gates, you see. Four light experiments, bit of VHF, maybe EME, who knows. Uh, there we are. I'm interested in your comments here though. If you've got experience of putting a small mast up economically, I'm, uh, I mean, this is almost a field day thing, but the trouble is you can use like a poly rope on field days because that's got a lot of stretch and you can do some tweaks, but I'm going to be here sometimes, you know, well, I'm not going to be here for days on end. So if the thing is up, I want very, very high quality, you know, very high quality rope, very high quality connectors, very high quality guy stakes and things like that. So I am waffling. Uh, your comments, please. And I will see you soon. Enjoy your radio. Bye for now. This might look like a tidy place, but from afar, I can tell you that I'm in a complete mess right now.